Alright guys, here is a, a video of a sunroom addition we did. Uh, it's like 400, a little over 400 square foot. Um, basically you just mark out where it's going. And then we uh, dug out the foundation. It's like 24 by 20 roughly is the size of it. Uh, your foundation needs to be depending what location you're at, but at least uh, 16 inches wide by 10 in, 8 to 10 inches deep. The codes are different uh, depending on the frost line. We're just laying the, we got a, one step down in the foundation. We didn't have to do that, but it saved a little bit on, uh, I guess, block or, and labor. Um, we're getting the block finished up here and we got to hit you can see the door beside the fireplace you know we got to make sure that our finished floor is even with the finished floor of the house which takes some calculations and just getting everything right We're starting the fireplace here and the sill plate boards which are what we're putting on here you can't see really but there's bolts uh, concreted in the block and we're drilling for them this board has to be bolted to the block this is what connects the wooding the wooden construction to the block foundation and you got to have anchor bolts holding it down and this seal plate has to be treated this is the only thing that has to be treated on an addition but it has to be treated lumber just put it in the floor three quarter inch subfloor And this was kind of tricky because most, um, you know, most structures or additions do need a crawl space. Uh, seeing as we are so low here, we really didn't have room for a crawl space. So we just, we had to do vent it and check on the vent requirements because I think it's like every uh, 200 square foot, you need a vent. So we had, we needed two vents at just 400 square foot, a little over. Floor is pretty much done. We're getting the walls put up. Uh, we're going for five foot wide windows through the sunroom. In between each window, there's approximately six two by fours. And this is important, your top wall plate needs to be doubled and they interlock with the wall beside it. The front wall, the very top 2x4 overhangs the side wall and nails down to it. And this is what locks all your walls together. And this is uh, code required. Just getting the last wall up. <clears throat> Anywhere that the wall ties into the house, you have to have it properly uh, tied. I have a picture coming up about it <clears throat> in just a second. It should have been before this, but this was the right wall. Uh, you can see we had to cut the brick out and we have to hit the studs of the existing house, build that out with two by fours and tie it into our wall. It has to be tied into the structure of the home. The same thing with the roof. You can't see, but at the top of every rafter, there's one long, um, I guess, ledger board. It, it actually, the siding of the house is cut away right there where that board is. It's a two by 10 and it nails into all the studs of the house and it locks the roof in.
to the house. And not only is it nailed, it has to be um, bolted as well with special either lag bolts or um, construction screws. All right, putting the two by six overhang boards up. We're going for a 12 inch overhang all the way around. And you want to use two by sixes for your overhang because, or even less, uh, don't use this, whatever you use for your rafters because uh, your fascia board is going to be a one by six. So, unless you want to customize a fascia, but, you know, this is just kind of the simplest method. And this is what most, most houses would be built as, unless you're getting that custom, something custom built, but. Um, they wanted a lean style roof. It's obviously a little cheaper than a gable style and also depending on where you're attaching to the house, if you got windows that are going to be in the way, sometimes you can't do a gable. You have to do a lean style. So, and they had several windows and a fireplace. So it was just kind of easier and a little uh, cheaper for everyone to go this route. on the side fascia, the drip edge. Uh, the headers are up. I didn't really get a good video of putting those up, but they're all up everywhere around, above every window and opening. Just getting the block finished around the fireplace. This fireplace is going to be stamped concrete, uh, filled stone. Oh, look, it's the inspector. That would be the framing inspector. He inspects the framing and what you need uh, every step of the way pretty much has to be inspected. The foundation, the structure, the electrical. All right, we got all the block done, and this is the scratch coat that goes on before the concrete because it gives a good texture for the concrete to hang on to, and it's not just smooth block. And you let it dry, and then you mix this special blend up of um, mortar mix with a wall concrete mix or de decorative mix. It's also called, it's for stamping and carving. And you basically are going for about an inch and a half to two inches thick on the wall when it's finished. Uh, you can go up to three, I think, but it's kind of difficult. So you just get it on there. You mix it up and then you get it on there and smooth it out and stamp it. I have another video on my channel that goes into this. Um, a lot deeper and a longer video basically this is just a texture roller it gives it a texture instead of the smooth concrete look it gives it more of a natural stone look uh, the texture is also in the stamp so and your corners if you have a corner your stamps ain't gonna be perfect um, you know lined up around the corner so Usually on the cornerstone, you kind of have to carve that. You just stamp, get as close as you can with your stamp, but always be ready to kind of use a, I use like a trial or something, like a drywall trial or putty knife to get those corners good. Because see, the cornerstone needs to wrap around the corner and it's just really hard to do that with a stamp, so. I'll check with the little level put on top of my stamp and that way just make sure you're 
we're running pretty level through there. You know, just getting started. Once you get started, your stamps will pretty much continue to line up. So every now and then you may want to check it. Each stamp is a different pattern uh, and that just keeps it looking uh, natural so you don't see a repeating pattern over and over. You just switch them up, you can spin them around. So there's a lot of different patterns you can come up with with them. Uh, just getting this about finished up here. And we'll go into staining uh, here just shortly. Just a short little video on staining and what gives it that, uh, what makes it look really good, you know, because right now it's all concrete gray. So the staining is what really sets it apart and gives it that natural look. It gives you different, different tones in it and different colors in it. The stuff will be dry and hard, but you know, the following day, which is right now, I'm starting to stain it. Before you stain, you spray it all down with water and then you stain. And then the water will evaporate and it'll leave behind the stain. And all that water really does is kind of dilutes the stain because you don't want the stain to be crazy. You want it, you know, real kind of faint. And you can see the blacks and the reds in here and the browns. And, you know, I go into the staining a little better right here on the front. And you'll kind of get a better idea. Uh, this bottom section is all hand carved. There's no stamps for this. So, uh, the bigger the stone, the bigger the seam you want. And that just gives it like a, a bigger look, bolder look maybe. Yeah, okay, we're staining. I start with the black stain. And if it drips on the stone under it, keep you a water bottle and you can watch what I do when it drips underneath to the stone just spray that part down with water and it'll dilute it and wash it right away before it has time to really penetrate and dry I just go through and hit random stones with the black and then now I'll switch over to like the brownish red color I usually want three at least three different colors um, and these are really common colors for field stone the blackish and the reddish tint and then like the brownish which I'll use last and that's what really begins to make it look natural is when you start after you stain I spray it down water first and then your stain and then if it drips under it hit it with water around it and just hit random stones now this is one of my favorite colors so I'll probably do a little more with the reddish color and this is my final color that I use. It's like a, I guess it's a champagne color. It doesn't show up really well with this, but it does just a little, there's a slight contrast and you can see that on the left side, one of the stones is natural and the one under it is a little bit lighter. And that's really what you're going for. Just so it's not all the same color. So when it's all done, there should be kind of four different tones. And that's what sets it apart and gives it the individual stone look. All right. Enough of that. Now we're going into the windows, installing the windows. These are five by five, five foot by five foot windows. Uh, sliding windows. Uh, 
Uh, we put the house wrap on, the Tyvek. There's uh, several brands of that. It's just uh, waterproofing. It has to be done by code. And it's pretty easy. Just staple it on and your siding will go on over top of that. Uh, that actually underneath that is plywood. I don't think I've got a video of that. But yeah, you, you got your studs, your framing, and then you put your plywood on, which it's only like half inch or 7 16 inch. Um, it don't have to be nothing thick. It's just, uh, it's what your siding then will nail to. But you still want to hit the studs with your siding. All right, doing brick laying. This is just getting like a brick skirt around it. Um, we matched this brick as close as we could to the natural brick of the house. Uh, where we demoed some of the brick, I took it to the brickyard and we matched it up as good as possible. And it it's a pretty good match, you know, we couldn't hardly tell. And you want to go for that. It kind of looks like it was all built together. That's what you're going for. My buddy Michael there, he's a good brick guy. My brother Michael also is a, a good brick layer. Um, I'd say they've probably done it for 15, 10 years, something, 15 years maybe. Your top edge of your brick, uh, if you're going this way with it, uh, it needs to be sloped away from the building that way your water run off run off all right we're doing the lap siding <clears throat> get it going get your first one perfectly level and the rest should follow and you can see the middle window is missing on this side uh, that's the only one uh, we actually had to order a different style right there well, same style, it's just a slightly different size, three five-foot windows. All right, got the siding almost done here. The brick's all done. We've got landscape around it about done, smoothed out, put some straw down. Alright, moving to the interior, hanging drywall. Alright, here we've got basically uh, the walls finished up, paint going on. We got the ceiling done, beadboard ceiling. We got the skylights trimmed out. This is a set of French doors we put in. There was a double window there, if you remember. We took those double windows out and put in a French door. Now this is luxury vinyl, waterproof flooring uh, we're putting in here. Hardwood uh, pattern. And these are pretty much final product here. Um, got furniture in now, all the baseboard, all the trim up, lights installed, ceiling fan installed. Final product you're looking at here. Um, French doors are painted in this photo. Uh, ceiling fans up, skylights all done. Floor, baseboard, window trim. It's all completed. 
about 400 and square foot, a little over. Got the front porch light, a plug under the window. And we got a set of floodlights up top. Crawl space vents. Got it done. Thanks guys for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe and like the video. And we'll see you soon. Got other great videos.